And you are so kind as to provide us with all the goods here, brother. You got it all, man. If there is a guy who provided a smoking gun, it is you, brother. You are organized. It is personally signed by Clayton Morris. And then, of course, the most obvious thing from this document is Morris, Clayton Morris himself, guarantees you that at the next tenant turnover, he himself will pay for it. Did that happen? No, that didn't happen. Welcome to another episode of the Landlords from Hell show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I am your host, James Wise. Today's show is continued coverage on the alleged scam committed by Clayton Morris and his company, Morris Invest. If this is the first time you've heard anything about the allegations lobbied against Clayton Morris, in the show notes below, we've done extensive coverage on the topic. The first thing you're going to want to do is check out our three-hour-long documentary, which lays a big overview of the whole situation. In addition, we had to make a second video because instead of trying to make things right for all the alleged victims, Clayton Morris has used his power, his influence, and his money to lobby a huge lawsuit, a $7.2 million lawsuit against me and Holton Wise for our coverage on the topic. So that is in the show notes as well. The thing about all the coverage that we've put out there on this topic is every time a show goes live and you folks are sitting at home and you have the opportunity to hear the story from others who are in a very similar position as you are, you become empowered and you start hitting the internet and hitting forums, reaching out to people, sending us information, and you guys are putting up a fight and I wanna see that continue. When we started our coverage and we did our first round of interviews, we only had so much evidence. We had ample evidence, but what we have today is so much more than what we had back at that time. When we did our second video, which again, that's in the show notes below, where we went over the lawsuit that Clayton has lobbied against us, we actually went over three purchase agreements that were signed by Clayton Morris himself. In the previous video and that video, we have Clayton on camera saying he never sold a single property in Indianapolis. But yet we had three Clayton Morris signed purchase agreements at that time. I am very happy to tell you guys as I am talking to you right now, we now have over 12 signed purchase agreements. These purchase agreements all signed by Clayton Morris. That is not one, but at least 12 smoking guns. In addition more people keep becoming empowered to tell their story and that's what we're doing right now we had an alleged victim named andy come on to tell his story let's take a look at the footage now andy coming on my show i imagine it's probably been tough for you uh for a lot of investors that we have interviewed this is one of the most embarrassing or difficult moments in their life and to think that one of the toughest moments in your life is going to be publicized for hundreds of thousands of people to view and it's going to be out there forever why do it to yourself why go through that and put yourself out there why come on my show and tell your story well if like so many things the the things that are the hardest are the things that are the strongest convictors of preventing things um, from happening in the future. So I want to use this as a cautionary tale to others to do their due diligence, to make sure that if, if things don't seem right, it's not right. If things seem too good to be true, it is. And make sure that you double, triple, quadruple check um, before you enter in, in things. And don't just accept somebody because they're you know, a former news anchor or because, um, you know, somebody else says so, make sure that you feel comfortable because even if you feel comfortable, you can still make your own mistakes, but definitely don't ignore the elephant in the room. I know that, you know, that was one of the big things that when I went through and, and 
there were some inklings on bigger pockets of, you know, Clayton Morris not selling good properties and, and he was able to kind of, you know, um, snake charmer might be a bad word, but he was able to talk around it and was very eloquent. And, you know, those things can, can be deceiving and, you know, I can't speak to his intent or what he was thinking at the time. Um, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it's just one of those things where it, it, it is embarrassing. And it's one of those things where you're like, how could I put myself in this situation? Um, I mean, $40,000, I'm, you know, I literally took that money out of our retirement um, to, to put into this with the ex expectation that this was going to be something that would, you know, help um, for a long-term investment. Clayton Morris is still very active on YouTube and his various other social media platforms. And he's very much pitching this whole financial freedom through real estate product uh, pretty much in the exact same way he was doing before he roped you and many others into it. When you see those videos out there and him continuing to promote the exact same things, how does that make you feel? It makes me sick. Um, you know, I, I'm a part of some national groups. Um, I haven't looked on bigger pockets in a while, but I'm assuming there's a similar sentiment, but I'm in some other national groups and it pops up um, like, Hey, has anybody bought a home in, you know, from Clayton Morris, he's, you know, trying to get into Detroit, I heard, and things like that. Um, and I'm just like, ha <laughs> uh, probably should, you know, read the news. But the fact that it still pops up there speaks to still the notoriety that he has. And obviously being a former, you know, Fox and Friends news anchor and supposedly trustworthy person, like he demands or carries a certain weight and unfortunately he I, I it's something that he's used for for deceiving people there is clear-cut evidence that you have provided to me undisputable evidence that at the very least Clayton Morris lied to you caused you to spend almost forty thousand dollars based upon a lie and the first thing I want to discuss with you is this purchase agreement 3920 East 10th Street uh, it's a property in Indianapolis, all the way on page five. We have the purchase agreement signed by you and then signed by Clayton Morris. So tell me about this property and you buying this property. How did you come about buying this particular property from Clayton Morris? Yeah, so back in 2017, I started, hey, I need to buy some real estate. And I live out in the state of Washington and it's really expensive to buy a house out here. So decided to take a look and stumbled upon Clayton Morris's um, well done, you know, podcast and series there. And it's like, okay, well, this sounds like a good idea. Got in touch with uh, one of his sales reps uh, via, you know, submitting information. And from there, went through the the standard process of or their standard process, I guess, of buying a house, which included them sending me a, a property. Hey, do you want to buy it? Do you want to buy it? Um, pull the trigger or not. Um, I, I passed on a couple houses and then this one came up and I didn't want to lose out on the, you know, the promised $650 a month for the price that, you know, for $38,500. I was like, that's an amazing steal. So went ahead and jumped on that with the intention of having it you know, turnkey and, and, and ready for me. Who specifically were you talking to when you refer to they? Who is, yeah. is that Clayton Morris, is company Morris Invest? Is that yeah. Ocean Point? Who is yeah. they? Yeah, so they is, there, there was a sales rep at the time. Uh, I think his name is Dave Cohn. Um, I have emails back and forth between him. Um, and then I have, I worked with, Mostly from on the sales side, Dave Cohn, uh, who is a Morris Invest employee. Email address is dave at morrisinvest.com. So I know he was. Um, and then there's a, a Nicole Meckley, who again has a Nicole at morrisinvest.com email address. We go to the closing, the settlement statement. They've completely baited and switched you because Clayton Morris's name the name Morris Invest is nowhere to be found on your settlement statement. So on your purchase agreement, 
it says Clayton Morris. As soon as we get to your settlement statement with the title company, though, it is now Ocean Point Holdings LLC. So my question to you then, Andy, when, if ever, did someone from Morris Invest explain to you explicitly that you are not actually buying a property for Morris Invest? And when they told you that, were you not questioning why, if I'm not buying a property from Clayton Morris, did Clayton Morris sign my purchase agreement? Yeah, no, you're, you're right on. I mean, the hair started raising on the back of my neck when I did see that. So it wasn't explained to me that, hey, this is going to be coming from Ocean Point. Like I would have expected, like I've bought a few homes of my own. I would have expected that, hey, if there's going to be a surprise on a contract, I mean, I'm not reading my Apple terms and agreements, but I'm reading through these documents because if I'm going to put up, you know, nearly $40,000 of my own cash, uh, I'm, you better believe I'm going to kind of read through it. So I was taken aback and I probably, I, you know, that should have been my first red flag to just turn around and be like, this isn't how I want to do business, but ignored the, ignored the red flags and went through and just, again, when I, when I did raise it, it was just kind of swept under the rug. At that point, I had no idea who Burt Whalen was. So it's like, Hey, this is just how we, how we shuffle things through and how we sell them out to our investors. So it never was clearly explained. Two, please. Did they give you the impression that Ocean Point was a completely separate company or did they give you the impression that Ocean Point was just another entity owned overall by Clayton Morris and the Morris Invest brand? How did they position that to you? Yeah, it wasn't expressly explicitly one way or the other. It was just kind of like, hey, we go through this standard process and we meaning when, when either Dave or Clayton talked directly, cause I, I, unfortunately my phone uh, has since gone kaput. And so I don't have any of the physical um, emails or, or sorry, the voice text that he would send me or anything, but any com any communication, it was, we meaning Morris invest was going to be doing the rehab. They were, you know, had oversight over the property management, even though I knew that they weren't the ones physically doing the property management, they had their direct hands in it. And so it was, it was understood that they were in control of like how the rehab was going to get done and they would see to make sure that it was done. They had a few questions, but you know, you're, you're reasonably confident at this point. So you decided to move forward, go ahead and close the sale. As I understand it, things did not go well from there. What had happened after you closed the sale? Yeah. So after I closed the sale, I was handed over to um, their operations manager over at Morris Invest. Again, still no real, real anybody working with Ocean Point. Uh, but on a weekly basis, I would send an email uh, asking for updates. And they're like, we'll get you updates. We'll get you updates. So about five weeks in, they send an email and say, yeah, we're going to go over to the property and make sure that everything's done. Um, when you say everything's done, what do you mean by it? what were they supposed to do? What did they promise <laughs> that they were going to do? Uh, it was very vague. There was no actual scope that was sent over. It was just getting it rent ready. And so I had literally zero information about what work was actually done. I just had the original pictures of what it looked like when they, when they sold it to me. So up until this point, can you walk me through ex exactly what you've agreed to purchase? I know you agreed to purchase the property for 38 and a half grand and it's supposedly yep. going to rent for 650 a month. Yep. Is it already renovated? They are going to renovate it. What's they happening? Were, yeah, so I bought it pre-renovated with the expectation that it was going to be made ready for the next tenant. They never did a renovation. I kept asking weekly for updates for pictures that they promised that they would send along the way. Uh, and it was clear after five weeks um, that there wasn't going to be a rehab done because there was a tenant that was living in there. So it 
it took them five weeks to figure out there was actually an occupant in your property and it wasn't vacant? <laughs> yeah, so that's, that, that leads me to the, the document that I sent you over with Clayton's signature that they would perform the next rehab when the tenant turned over. So they, at that point, they're like, hey, this is a weird situation where we didn't know if the tenant was gonna stay or not stay and we decided to let them stay and and keep the keep the rent coming this document which is another smoking gun um, and i implore anyone else out there who's watching this who has been taken advantage of by these people please drop it in the comments below we want to hear your story just that's how andy found us he's watched our previous videos on the topic and uh, he's got a story to tell and we are here to help him tell it there is relief out there that is available for you all. You don't have to just take it on the chin, folks. This type of stuff is wrong and we are going to expose all of it. But this document, Andy, this is a, this is a great document. And this document, it, it does several things for me. Number one, if you look at it, it says Morris Invest and then in parentheses, Ocean Point LLC. So to me, I'm reading that as he is saying, Ocean Point LLC and Morris Invest are one in the same. That's one thing I gather from this document. The second thing I gather is that it is personally signed by Clayton Morris. And then, of course, the most obvious thing from this document is Morris, Clayton Morris himself, guarantees you that at the next tenant turnover, he himself will pay for it. Did that happen? No, that didn't happen. I tried, so this past summer, the, ten, the, uh, the property became, it was clear that we had to evict the tenant. Um, I reached back out to Clayton Morris and I was not able to get a hold of him. How much money do you estimate that this renovation is going to cost you? Uh, well, at this point it's sitting vacant and I would, I mean, I, I was told that there's human feces on the outside and stuff like that. So um, between fines that I've already paid to the health department um, and property taxes and all that, I $25,000, $30,000. I mean, I could maybe shave it down depending on if, if we get some, some things there. But yeah, between twenty dollars and $30,000 easy. So you have a document signed by Clayton Morris that he gave to you back in 2017 where he a associated himself as ocean point and b agreed to pay for your first tenant turnover there's a line in there right there it says this agreement has no time limit and does not expire as you and i talk right now in january 2020 has clayton made good on this signed agreement no he has not what had happened when you have tried to reach out to Clayton Morris to get him to give you the money he owes you, essentially? Essentially, this man has stolen, to, to your estimation, between twenty-five dollars to $30,000 from you. What has he said as his excuse for not giving you the money he owes you? I have not heard back in the past, I don't know how long, six months or nine months since I've tried to um, since the tenant, since the property has become vacant, I have not heard anything from Clayton Morris. When you found out that Clayton Morris fled the United States of America for Portugal, what went through your head, knowing that you have this twenty-five to thirty thousand dollar debt out there that he still hasn't made good on? Um, well, I had, to be honest, I had low hopes already because I had wind of. Uh, Ocean Point and all of that failure. Um, and unfortunately, there's other people that have way more losses. And I consider myself lucky if you can consider yourself lucky when you lose $20,000 compared to some of the other stories. Um, but not that I want to say I chalked it up as a loss, but I've been just trying to figure out how to best make the situation. Clayton Morris has never actually denied that the people who purchase properties through his companies and his affiliated companies down there in Indianapolis, lost money. Instead, what he has done is he has completely 
separated himself from Ocean Point in an attempt to point the finger directly at Ocean Point in Burt Leyland. With the documents you've provided for me, the purchase agreement that has Clayton Morris's name on it, this contract between you and Clayton Morris, which also has his name and signature on it, where he more or less admits that Morris Invest and Ocean Point are one and the same. What are your thoughts on his defense that, hey, it wasn't me. I'm a victim alongside of you. You know, if it was a, at some point, again, just like I had the, the twinge in my, the back of my neck, like you would expect that at some point when the first or second complaint comes in, I can't imagine that these didn't come in beforehand, that at some point you'd be like, something is wrong here. If he was acting in a, in a way that he makes us, that he cares about people that he's investing and he's helping people get to their financial freedom. If he really cared about that, he would have done a little bit more due diligence. He would have under like me as a company owner, I don't, you know, I, I would never sell this house that I own to anybody else. Even if I had no idea who they were without telling them it's a piece of garbage, it's a dumpster fire. Like there's literally somebody, you know, rubbed human feces on the outside of it. Like I couldn't do that with a conscience. And so to the, like the hundreds of homes that, or however many homes he sold in Indianapolis, I can't imagine that, that this is the only instance. And it's, it's unreasonable to expect that he didn't have some sort of inkling, even if it wasn't explicit. If you were sitting across the table from Clayton Morris right now, and you had the opportunity to talk to him, what would you say to him? Treat people better. Special thanks to Andy for coming on the show and telling us his story. I know that had to have been tough, but that's what's great about the fact that we've done so much coverage on this whole mess. Every time we put out a new episode, more alleged victims become empowered to come on here and tell their story. We are going to work together to ensure that he does not walk away from his involvement in this situation scot-free. So if you've got a story, we want to help you tell it. Put it in the comments below and our team will reach out to you for further discussion. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise and this is real estate investing made easy. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you'll also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and Rent Tech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.